today we're going to learn the pentatonic scale shape up here, which is what Ariel was just using to create all that magic. So it's a five note scale. There are many notes that belong to it on the guitar, but it's really just five different notes. So it's E, G, A, B, and D. And then we finish it off on the next E, an octave up. Before that, let's talk about picks. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to hold the pick. So then the number one thing is basically what we're using the pick as a kind of an extension of our thumb. It's going to sit at the tip of the thumb, kind of like a, like a thumbnail, like an underneath thumbnail. Except it's going to go out to the, to the left like that. I'm using this one millimeter white Dunlop pick. We could hold it like this, we could hold it like that. That doesn't really matter. The main principle is the relationship to the thumb. When we play, we need some kind of anchoring. So that's principle number two. Either we anchor with our baby finger here, or we can anchor with the heel of our palm against the bridge over there, or we can do both. Really, the, the principle of anchoring goes very much together with keeping the hand relaxed. We're not making a tight fist and holding the pick like this. That also really impedes our movement. What we want is we want that kind of perfect emoji hand position. Which, which really lets the hand move naturally. And then when these fingers are relaxed, they've, they're, they're perfectly set up for some kind of anchoring. I hold my hand over here. I just lightly feel this, this crash blade. The main thing is to have it relaxed, like Johnny said. So holding it like that and the anchor over here. Yeah, do you use your baby finger on the volume knob? Sometimes I use it like that, but I don't hold it like this. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't keep it straight. You wouldn't lock it out ever. Right. These fingers stay really loose. And we have some kind of anchor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice just playing some open strings. Whenever we learn something new, we want to focus on one thing at a time, right? So we're going to be crossing three strings. That's new for today. So we're just going to practice the right hand first. It's very hard to, to focus on the right hand when we're learning new left hand things. So we're just going to start with the right hand. And we're going to start by playing twice on the E, A, and the D, and the A string again. It looks like this. So now we're going to jam along a bit, just practicing crossing the strings. We're going, to, we're going to keep the open strings, we're going to stick to open strings, and we're going to just play twice on each string, going from string six, five, four, and back to string five again. So that's the E string, the A string, the D string, and the A string again. We're going to have our metronome on at 80 beats per minute, and we're going to try to stay totally in time with the metronome. And what that allows for us to do is really to sync well with other people. So Ariel's going to put some little jams on top of it and we can just we'll just play around. Three, four. Cool, so that's, you know, that's just getting the right hand started. Now we're going to have a look at the left hand. We're going to start just with the first string. So the, the first string in this case is going to be the low E string. What we can do is we can play two low E strings and then two times on the low E string with fret three. And I'd suggest using finger two or finger three because we want to use different fingers for the different notes in the scale. So it's going to sound like this. And that gives us a kind of a different flavor. That's a, a minor interval. You can hear it's got like a little bit of a dark sound to it. And we're going to do the same thing, 80 beats per minute and a couple, a couple of runs together and Ariel's going to jam along. And we suggest really that you, you know, get your guitar and jam along. That was the E string. Let's move straight on and let's practice the A string. So in this case, like if we used finger two here, we're going to use finger one over here so that when we play the whole scale, we can keep our hand really still. Similar to the anchoring process uh, principle over here. Look, there's one main principle throughout guitar. We don't want to be moving our hands around. We want the movement to be in the fingers, just like typing. And this is the basis of a lot of riff playing. A lot of things you can do with just that little simple run. 
cool. And as you can see, Ariel's using fingers two and three. That would be a great practice. But if that's tricky for you, finger one and two is also, you know, also totally cool. It's also going to help a lot with your chord changes. You know, one of the big mistakes people make is they just try practice changing chords, which is actually not our method. Our method, if you follow the lessons from the start, is really getting the fingers all moving because that's the basis of how we change chords. So you know, if you want to practice changing chords, you can practice scales. They, they're going to help a lot with the chords. Cool, so let's just do the next string, same thing, huh? We're going to do two times open, two times fret two in this case, because that's what happens on the, on the A string of this particular scale. Three, four, and... And the next thing is going to be playing the whole scale, practicing crossing the strings and changing the notes. And so we're going to play all five notes of the scale, and then the sixth note, which is coming back to the E again, but this time it's an E, an octave up, so it's the E on the, on the fourth string. And I think we should play each note four times. It's exactly the same thing. You've got the tabs there to help you. And let's, let's rock and roll. Two, three, four. <laughs> playing with a more advanced guitarist, what advice would you give to the person jamming along? What are you what are you doing there? I'm thinking in the key of D major actually, E minor Dorian. The chords I'm using basically is E minor, obviously E minor seven, D and then A major, a major and G major. So we're gonna be making a lot of lessons on scales and understanding all this weird kind of voodoo that goes on over here. Um, but yeah, for now, what we're learning now is a little bit of theory, but really we're learning a lot of technique, because at the beginning you need the technique to explore the guitar. So the techniques like crossing, changing the strings and all of that. So now that we've got the whole scale, we want to show you how the scale is written out in a scale diagram. So that's one thing we haven't touched on yet. We've done tabs, of course. We've done chord diagrams. Now we're going to do scale diagrams, which are actually very similar to chord diagrams. you just got to know how to read them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through the scale. We're going to show you underneath how the, how the notes fall on the neck and then how that gets transformed into a diagram and then how to read the diagram. So let's just go through it slowly. We've got the open string. We've got fret three. We've got the open string on string five. Fret two. Then open string four. And then fret two on string four. So as you can see, this, the scale diagram, it's an exact map, it's not a mirror image. It's actually the neck of the guitar flipped on its side with all the notes of the scale written at once. And how do you know what order to play them? Well, you know what order to play them because you know they go from the lowest note to the highest note. So we start really on the diagram. We start in the top left hand corner with the lowest note, then we move up to the higher note on that string. And then when there are no more notes on that string, we move to the next string. It's really like a chord diagram, except we're just playing one note at a time, from the lowest to the highest. And once you once you understand these scale diagrams, that really opens up a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, the full scale goes like this. And for the more advanced players, you can shift that shape around to any fret.
Let's do a bit of ear training. So to start with, we're just gonna repeat rhythms and let's start on the fifth string. I'm gonna play a little rhythm and you can just play it back. So we're gonna play it and then we're gonna give you, give you just a little moment to play it back, so. I'm sure you, I'm sure you did, I'm sure you did great. Let's try another one. Okay, let's do it with fret two. So we'll make it slightly harder by using a fretted note. Cool, now we're gonna make things a bit interesting because what we're gonna do is we're gonna change between the two notes. So in the beginning, you can kind of watch along and you know see, see what I'm doing, but really what you wanna be able to do is to do it without looking, you know, to kind of, to kind of look away. Um, Ariel's very good at it, so I'm going to do a few, and he's going to he's going to demonstrate what what you should be doing, and you'll see he doesn't even need to look. <laughs> and even with these two notes, we can get. You can actually make them really hard by making the rhythms hard. Also, we, I only started ever on the, on the lower note, so now I'm going to start on either note. And you'll hear that just by, you can really learn those two notes. You know, often we see people playing by ear, and we think it's like this magical skill, because there seem to be like so many notes on the guitar that they can choose from. And there are so many notes on the guitar that they can choose from, but actually when your ears just get a little bit trained, you narrow it down enormously and they're actually really just cho choosing from one or two because they're hearing whether it's going up or down and they know what key they're in. And so it's, it's actually a lot, a lot simpler than, than we make out. And this would, be, this would be the best way to get started, you know, it's just to take two notes and really just, you know, see with your ears, you know. Um, cool, so let's get a bit more, a bit more interesting and Ariel's not gonna play and you could you could look away and see if you can see if you can play them exactly as I play them. And remember, I'm either going to start on this note, the lower note of the two, or this note. You could also practice singing them back. playing it back try singing that's a really great tip singing along as you play is you know it's an ex excellent thing we see a lot of the great like lead guitarists they're really singing with their guitar and they and they sing they sing a lot as well great that's it for today that's guys. it for today we're going to post some some cool scale shapes and we're going to post the the whole two octaves of the scale up in a diagram so you can you can test yourself and see if you can see if those diagrams are working for you as always if there's anything that's not clear or any questions just post them in the comments or message us on our facebook page or get, get in touch and yeah we look forward to seeing you too soon in uh, lesson seven mm -hmm.